Hi, it's Brian Johns from the University of Iowa. Today I'll be walking through the lost foam casting process. This process involves three major steps. First, pattern making, which can be done on the PCNC 770 from Tormach. Mold making, where I will be using green sand. And lastly, the pouring of the molten metal into the mold. Lost foam casting is similar to investment casting, except for the pattern material we use foam instead of wax. The foam I will be using is just regular building insulation foam, but you can also pick up polystyrene foam from your regular art supply store in different shapes and sizes. There are a few advantages to using foam. First, it's very soft and easy to cut with the CNC mill, so we can use very high feeds and speeds, getting the part done very quickly. Secondly, the pattern does not need to be removed from the mold before we pour the molten aluminum. The molten aluminum will just quickly evaporate the foam. This gives the ability to make very complex parts without hassling with parting lines and cores. So, let's get started with making the pattern. Now that the pattern has been finished, a couple extra pieces of foam have been glued on with hot glue. This is the sprue and this is the vent. So as we pour the material in, it will come down the sprue, fill up the part, and come out the vent. The sand has also been sifted to a very fine sand. Fine sand will give you a better surface finish. It's been wetted down, so it clumps if you grab a fistful of it. You don't want it too wet where it's soupy or muddy. The next step is preparing the mold. The goal is simply to pack the sand as tightly as possible around the pattern. This is achieved by adding sand and then using a ramming tool to pack the mold. This is done layer by layer until the flask is full. After the furnace is turned on, put the lid on the top of the furnace. It will take approximately 10 to 20 minutes for the aluminum to melt.
You see on some of these molds, I stop pouring and wait for the foam to melt, and then continue to pour after the foam has melted. This isn't the ideal way to pour. It is best to have a continuous pour throughout the mold. To do this, one must create a pressure head tool that acts as a temporary reservoir of molten metal until the foam melts.